Matt, can we give Jesus a praise? I, I, I was going to say, you, 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 you did a great job when you welcomed me right now. But I said, can we give Jesus a praise? Okay. Because that praise should be so much louder, right? God is doing some amazing, amazing things in this ministry. I am so grateful. I am honored to be a, just to be a part of it. They could have put me in the parking lot. And I would have just been grateful to be a part of the move of God, which is taking place right now in 2021. And it's true. We've been in Pomona. We've seen firsthand what this pandemic has done in the city and in the churches. You can drive in the blocks and you'll see boarded up churches, block after block after block. Some of the major churches were able to, to, to stay open. But all these small churches, they're just, it's like a graveyard of churches right now. So us going into this city right now, and like you said, is a beacon of hope. There are brothers and sisters in Christ that have been sitting in their homes for over a year, not able to serve. We are coming there. We are there to show them that it's okay to come out now. So I just want to say thank you to the team. Thank you, Pastor Marco, for, for just allowing me to be a part of this. Um, we're going to get right into a word. And, and uh, we're going to be going off of, you know, Pastor Marco has been in, in, um, in Matthew 5. He last, two weekends ago, or two weeks ago, he was in Matthew 8, uh, 5, 8. And he talked about happy where the cleansed and hearted, right? So today we're going to jump into, right into Matthew 5, 9. And it says, happy are those who work for peace. God will call them his children. And I love it. At the end of that, if you look it up in the, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, GNT version, and it has an explanation point, right? He said, God will call him his children, explanation point. That's like a stamp of approval. So we're going to go over and we're going to answer two questions today. And the two questions are, what is a peacemaker? And it's really ironic that I would be up here today speaking about this because this is exactly the opposite of what I was. My wife is here today. And she's holding me accountable for what I say. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say 100% the truth. I'm going to lay it all out there, guys. My wife will be the first to tell you, when I came home, it was chaos. I didn't bring peace into our house. I brought chaos. So that's the first thing we're going to go over. What is a peacemaker? The second one is, how do we become a peacemaker? Because the world will tell us what peace is, right? Or how to become a peacemaker. But we want to go off of what the Word of God says, right? So the definition of a peacemaker is a person who brings about peace, especially by, especially by reconciling adversaries. I heard the word adversaries, and I was, okay, I didn't have a high school diploma or anything, so I'm like, man, that's, that's a big word. So I jumped right into the next one, and I said, okay, I want to look up what is an adversary. It is one that contends with, opposes, or resists an enemy. How many of you know what it's like to have been an enemy of God. And let's tell the truth. Let's tell the truth. Who at one time has opposed God? Who at one time has contended with God? That should be every single one of us. It got real quiet right now. I'll stand up here and say, yeah, I did all of that. And some. So the first question we're going to answer is, is what is a peacemaker? And a peacemaker is, is a reconcile of adversaries or enemies. It's that simple. That's what a peacemaker is. Somebody who reconciles, brings together adversaries or enemies, right? And in a society today, we live in a society where peace is not the normal anymore. We see two people fighting and all of a sudden we want to pick up a cell phone and put it on TikTok or 
or I'm not, I'm not familiar with all these things today, but we want to put it on social media right away instead of stepping in, right, to help some people, to make amends with each other. That's exactly who I used to be. And I'm just going to be real with you guys. In the world that I came from, we had a form of, of it, was, it was fake peace. We could claim brotherhood. We could say, that's my homeboy. That's my family. Right? Some of you know what I'm talking about. The minute somebody got busted, things got cha changed around a little bit, huh? And I'm going to be real with you guys. That was me. We can sit there. We could say that we were tight, that we do anything for one another. But reality is the minute somebody turned their back, the minute somebody put their guard down, we attacked them. In a lot of ways, that's happening right now. It's happening right here. I'm not saying to say this church, but I'm going to say in the church itself. We can see a brother or sister hurting and all of a sudden we start to judge. All of a sudden we start to talk bad of them. Oh, did you know so-and-so was doing this? We have been called to reconcile. Just say that with me. We have been called to reconcile. It's important that you know that so that you know who you are. So Jesus was the greatest example of a peacemaker. His, his earthly mission while he was here was to reconcile our relationship with God. That's simple. That's what he was here for. He didn't just come out to check out the scenery. He didn't come down here to judge and point fingers. He came back on a mission to bring us back into fellowship with God. And the reason why is right here in Romans 5.10. And, and this is the NIV version, you guys. It says, for if, while we were God's enemies, and let me see you raise your hands. Who was God's enemy at one time? Come on, guys. Let me do that one more time. Who was God's enemy at one time or another? I should see every single hand go up. Come on, when we start being real with ourselves, we can, we can start getting some breakthrough, right? So it says, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. What did he do? What did he do? He gave his life. He took it to a whole nother level of reconciliation, right? Because what? There was a price that needed to be paid for us to be reconciled to God. For each and every one of us, there's a price. There's a price that needs to be paid, whether it be our time, whether it be our finances, when we see a brother or sister hurting, when we see two brothers and sisters quarreling, we don't jump on one side or the other, right? We go to try to make amends with them. We don't go start talking about them to the whole church. Man, did you know so-and-so was doing this or so-and-so was doing that? Did you know they're beefing? We look just like the world when we do that. And what? We've been called to be set apart. Right? To be different. So the second thing we're, we're going to answer today. So the first one is, what is a peacemaker, right? I think we all got understanding of that. Number two is, how do we become a peacemaker? The first thing that we do is we make peace with God. Wow, there was only a couple claps right there. <laughs> The first thing we do is we make peace with God. But maybe some of us don't want that. We, we, we want to be called. What was the blessing in, in the second part of that? It, 
that scripture, that we would be called children. We want that blessing, right? Oh, I want to be called a child of God. We even proclaim it. I'm a child of God. But do we do the first part of the scripture that tells us to work for peace? Right? But the first thing we need to do is make peace with God. And some of us want to hold on. No, I still want to do things my way. I still want to talk bad. I still want to gossip. I still want to, to, to jump in and start recording people fighting and doing all these crazy things. In my case, before coming to Christ, I used to have a stupid, uh, ignorant statement that I used to make. <laughs> Try to keep it real, but not that real, right? But I used to make this stupid state or this, this this ignorant statement, and this statement was that I'll stay out of God's house because I want him to stay out of mine. I wanted the lifestyle I was living. I didn't mind what I was doing. I know it sounds crazy. You see me, I, I, I do all kinds of stuff around here. I've been a greeter for, I was a greeter for years. Where's my greeters at? I've been in parking lot. I've been in discipleship, baptism. I picked up trash. I've done, you know, I've been all over the place. And you could see that but not know who I was before. I was dirty. I was dirty. I was conniving, manipulative, a liar, alcoholic, drug addict, gun running. I mean, it, it was all bad. And you know what? The old me loved it. I'll be honest. So I didn't want to reconcile with God. I didn't want a relationship with God. I wanted to do what I was doing. We have some pictures. I, I just want to pose. Oh, he's already got some up. <laughs> I don't know how long they've been up for, but does that look like somebody who, who was going to be an up, uh, what is it, a good person to go ahead and tell all your secrets to? <laughs> You're going to tell me the combination to your safe. Oh, yeah, that's great. No worries. Look at that guy. Really? I look at him. I don't even want to tell him nothing. But to make peace with God is absolutely powerful. When we make peace with God, something changes. Transformation begins to happen. Although I love doing the things that I was doing, that's what he does. When you make peace with God, he gives you a peace like no other. But you guys, it doesn't stop right there. It doesn't stop there. Making peace with God at the altar is the beginning of something, not the end of something. He begins to transform you. He begins to show you the things that, that are wrong. Although I knew they were wrong, I began to see them the way that God sees them. How filthy and disgusting I was. And I'm not trying to call anybody out. What I'm doing is I'm calling me out. And I want to go to 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. And it says, and all of this is a gift from God. What is it, guys? A gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of re reconciliation. What did it say right there? He said he's given us this task, right? With people for him, to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of re reconciliation. And there's two parts that I want to speak on, just really briefly on this. When you look at this, when he's reconciled us to him, and remember, this is him. 
This is all him. This isn't us. All we're doing is accepting it. He's saying, son, daughter, I don't want to be at war with you. You are not my enemy. Stop acting like it. Come to me. And guess what he did? Not only did he say come to me, he made a way for you to come to him. It don't get much easier. We make it hard when we want to hold on to the things that we've been doing. So either we can listen to what he's telling us or we can stand in our ignorance. And I say that because that's exactly what I did for 34 years. I stood in my ignorance. And I disguised it with, oh, well, I'm just down. Well, I'm just being real. Got quiet, guys. <laughs> the second part of that is look at what he says. He said he's given us the task now of reconciliation. So what has he done? He's given us the ministry. Once we've gone and we've made peace with God, now he says, okay, now I need you to go out and be a peacemaker. I need you to begin to bring people to me. Tell them that I've made a way. It's nothing that they have to do. All they have to do is say yes. We make it hard. So we must understand. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to get ahead of myself, guys. So when he's given us this ministry, guys, he's given us a purpose, right? And it's up to us if we accept the offer. The second part of this is, the first part was of how do we become peacemakers? We make peace with God. And the second part is we work for it. We work for it. It doesn't come easy, especially for the, some of the stuff that we've been watching. Some of the stuff we've been listening to. I'm sorry, I was the first to put on some Tupac and all of a sudden I was the, the, the biggest gangster ever and I was 16 years old. They're talking about rolling around in $100,000 cars and I borrowing $2 from mama. And my mom and my dad are here today, you guys. But we have to make sure, and I don't want to go too off, far off the point, but we have to work for this. Peace does not come naturally, especially in the society that we're in. Where they say it's okay to talk bad about people. Oh, well, I'm just telling the truth. Really? Keeping our mouth shut takes work. They are hit a nerve on that one. And I'm not trying to sit here and point for you. I'm going to say that again, you guys. No, no throwing rocks at me when you see me in the foyer. But what we're here to do is we're here to recognize something, right? And we're here to change something. Maybe, maybe we have been doing that. Maybe we've been entertaining gossip. Maybe we've been being judgmental, right? But this is our opportunity today to recognize it and be set free from it. So we work for it. As believers, the scripture, Matthew 5, 9, isn't just an encouraging scripture, but it's a command. As believers, how many believers do I got in the house tonight? As believers, when you hear that scripture, I didn't look at that scripture and say, oh, be a child of God. I saw the work involved. I'm already a child of God. I, now, okay, this is what I got to do. There's work, right? So this is a command, not a suggestion. And here's a couple of scriptures in case you didn't, you don't, you're not feeling that one, that says that it's work. In 1 Thessalonians 5.15, it says, don't repay evil for evil, but strive for peace. So right now, what do we do? We're not going to repay evil for evil. I'm going to hold back. Somebody cuts me off. I'm no longer going to be that person that kind of gives them a nice nudge into the gutter. Right? That takes work, especially on my part right now, guys. I'm, I, it's something that God's delivered me from, and it's, you know. But it takes work to strive for peace. 
doesn't come naturally. So second one in Hebrews uh, 12, 14, it says, make every effort to live in peace with everyone. Make every effort. Effort is work, right? So in Psalms 34, 14, it says, turn from evil. Turning takes work. I'm just pointing this out, you guys. It takes work, right? And do good. Seek peace and pursue it. In Ephesians 4, 3, it says, make every effort, again, to keep the unity of the spirit. In Romans 14, 19, make every effort to do what leads to peace. You guys, that's just a little bit. I couldn't, I could go on all night just in, in the scriptures on peace. But it all boils down to this. Peace will take work. But for children of God, for children of God, this is a calling. This is a command. This is not a suggestion. So we must understand that pursuing peace is work. And at times it will not be easy. In some cases, we really must go out of our way to seek, to, to, to pursue peace, right? How many of you guys are married? Okay. Okay. So right off the bat, how, uh, husbands, raise your hands. Okay, so right off the bat, I, I see some peacemakers right here. I don't know about you, but in my house, in my house, if I don't come up with a way to make peace, it's going to be World War III for the next 20 years. I love my wife. She's Holy Spirit filled. She's spirited. We call her spirited. But I want to use this as an example. For those husbands, and Paul says it clearly, right? In Ephesians 4.26, he says that we should not let the, the sun go down on our anger or on our wrath. That's just a, what he's talking about here. It's just a small portion of, of what we're to do. To not go to bed angry. To not go to bed mad, right? It doesn't matter whose fault it was. It doesn't matter if your brother or sister or, or and you know, let's go even outside the church. It doesn't matter if your coworker was talking about you. You're a child of God. What are you supposed to do? Oh, I, I'm just not going to talk to them. I'm going to go tell everybody else about it, but I'm just not going to talk to them. No, we're called to reconcile. Reconcile takes work, not just stand back. We're going to go out of our way. To make friends. There's a, there's a, a Brian Trejo song and it says, I will love all my enemies until they become my friends. I want to I tell you a, a quick story. Uh, and it happened right here, in fact. And with the pictures that you saw of me in my past, needless to say, I had some enemies, right? One of them happened to walk through the door of the foyer. <laughs> I forgot what it was. It was an event because we were standing outside these doors right here. We're waiting in line to come in. I was being introduced to uh, uh, one, of, one of my disciples, his mother, for the first time that came. And this gentleman was looking at me from far off. And I could already tell. I know that look. He comes up and the first thing I, I do is I put my hand out. Hey, how you doing? I have no idea who he was. But he knew who I was. He goes, yeah. I go, hey, you know, he, he looked at my hand and looked down, just mean mugging, right? So obviously I knew I must have done something wrong <laughs> in his past. But I, but I want to be serious, you guys, because my past, when you look at that, that's just a couple pictures that got taken. My past was real. So when this guy comes up, I knew it wasn't phony. The look on his face wasn't phony. I had done real damage in whatever area that was. So the first thing I do is I recognize, okay, there's an issue, right? Needless to say. I thought he was going to knock me out in the foyer. I was going to have to come and explain to Pastor Marco what happened. <laughs> but the first thing I have to do is I put my hand out. He looks at me. He looks down. He says, no, I go, hey, brother, my name's Chris. How you doing? 
He says, yeah, I know who you are with some other words involved. And I go, okay, now I'm embarrassed. I got this lady here for the first time. And, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> and I said, is there something I can help you with? He said, absolutely nothing. He gave me a look, and I wouldn't stand down. I was like, bro, I go, hey, man, I, do you want to go talk? Like, everything okay? What was I doing right there? Trying to reconcile a situation that I didn't even know what I did. It doesn't matter. Whatever the case, I was trying to reconcile. So what ends up happening? And this is the power of God. This is the blessing that comes behind it. So he takes off. He walks away. He's mad. And all I could say to, the, to, the, to our first-time guest was, sorry about that. You know, we, there is some people here that, you know, maybe they mistaked me. She looked at me like, come on, dude, you're lying. <laughs> when I saw that look, I said, okay, I go, we all have a past. <laughs> but what ends up happening is I see him again the next week come through the doors, and what do I do again? I could have went the other way. No, I'm hunting him down. I make it a point when I see him, I'm getting in front of him. I'm coming through the other door to, meet, to get in line so I can greet him. I want to reconcile this situation. And why? I want to see him at the altar. I don't want, to see, I don't want him to leave this place being upset or focused on me. I need to reconcile this thing so my brother in Christ can receive God's forgiveness. So week after week I did this. And I talked to my wife about this. And then I saw it and I just kept praying for him. And I was like, Lord, just I don't know what I did. But soften his heart. Let him hear another message. Let him get another good word. Then I see him bring his daughter. And I got to say, hey, what a beautiful little girl. Hey, ma'am, hey, brother, you know, hey, I got you a seat. I wasn't even an usher. I got you a seat. <laughs> I went out of my way. He gave his life to Christ that day. The next, the next week, I'm like, hey, brother, you made it back. He gave me the biggest hug The next week after that, we start talking. Never once, never once did I ever bring up what was his problem. He was able to get a, a, a really good job. He, he moved out of state, but I kept in contact. He's into a Bible-based church out of state. But imagine, imagine that soul that would not have came to these altars if I wouldn't have went out of my way to reconcile with him. There's power in it. And that's exactly why we've been given the ministry, right? But it takes work. So, oh man, time is running out. So it's intentional, guys. The choice is intentional and the effort is intentional. We must work for peace. We must choose peace over conflict. When we see something stirring up, oh no, I, nope, that's not going to happen. Right? We choose unity over division. We won't allow, when we see another brother or sister going at it, oh, that's their problem. No. You're a child of God. It's your problem now. So we choose harmony over strife, encouragement over slander, and blessings over gossip. We do not run off of our emotions. Could you imagine this, guys? Could you imagine if Jesus going to the cross would have would have ran off of his emotions. Could you imagine that? Peter just denied him three times. These guys are pulling, you know, beating him up. He's like, what am I even doing this for? Right? So we don't run off of emotions. We understand the purpose. Jesus had a purpose to drag that cross, to be denied. Everything was leading up for his purpose. And I want you to recognize something. That when things take place in your life, they're leading up to a purpose if you handle it the right way. So this means that we put our pride down. We put our judgment, judgmental, uh, being judgmental down. We go ahead. And, there's no more self, 
self-centeredness. I don't even know if that's a word. And we pick up love, compassion, and forgiveness. Those words, you guys, are not just feelings. Each one of those words that I've said takes work. Love is an action word. Forgiveness is an action word. And compassion is action. Work, work, work. So as believers, now more than ever, it's time that we stand out. It's time for people to say, you're strange, you're odd, right? The way we love, the way we forgive, the way we seek righteous, after righteousness, the way we strive for peace, it should stand out so over the top that people look at us and say, oh, my God, they're just ridiculous. Well, there's something weird about them, right? And in 1 Corinthians 1.18, it says, for the message of the cross is foolish to those who are perishing. It's okay. I'll look foolish. If being a child of God looks foolish, sign me up. So as my time is ending, you guys, man, that went fast. I want to end it with a challenge. As you go into your day, maybe it's not today. Maybe it's not tomorrow. Maybe it's not next week. For some of us, it's going to happen right when we get in the car. But here's the challenge. And I pray, and I pray, this is my prayer, that you would, this would be brought to, your, to remembrance when these things come up. The next time somebody displays hatred towards you in any, any kind of way, whether it be backstabbing, speaking bad about you, slandering your name, I want you to look at it as an opportunity to display God's love and forgiveness towards them. That is reconciliation. So today, you guys, that, that's it for my message. Um, a little bit over, but... Can everybody please stand up? Thank you, Billy. There's two types of people here today. And one of those is the one that hasn't received reconciliation with God. They haven't made peace with God. And, some of, and for some people, it's hard to even understand or grasp the concept of peace. For me, it was hard. There was no peace inside me, so I wasn't, I wasn't portraying to be a peaceful person. But I guarantee you today, if you take the first step to coming down to this altar to be reconciled with God, he will begin to change you. And the word says, the word says that he will give you the ministry of reconciliation. And I know for some of us that could be scary. We're like, man, I don't want to make peace with people. I don't want to teach people to make peace. But understand that's the call of God. Some of us today have been so full with hatred that it even disgusts you. And I know because that was me. Some of us today, we go home and, and, and our house and, and our families are, are in just utter destruction because of what we bring into the house, our conversations are tearing our families apart. The lack of peace in our homes. We can look into the city. I, we're looking in Pomona right now. And the biggest thing that we see, and there is neighborhood after neighborhood after neighborhood. And these neighborhoods are not getting along at all. And so what does that do? Puts up walls. Today, God is telling you, man, we need to break down some of these walls, you guys. Just come to me. So today, we don't have to leave the same way. We do not have to leave the same way. And it would be a shame if we did. 
We can hear a message like this and jump back in the car and all of a sudden we're right back at it again. So it's important. It's important that we make peace with God. He gives us the peace that we desire and we've been looking for. And if that's you, I'm going to ask you to take a, a bold step in just a couple of minutes. But if that's you, don't allow anything to hold you back. What the person next to you might say. How you feel. Sorry, man, that's embarrassing. Man, we did a whole lot of embarrassing stuff for the world. And we gladly did it, right? Or was that just me? But this is your opportunity to not leave the same way you came in here. And maybe there's some of you today that you've already received Christ, but you haven't been walking in the task that he's given you to do. Maybe you're not doing, you're not being a reconciler. Maybe you're not being a peacemaker. We have a group of, of altar workers here that would love to pray with you. Let's get back on task. Let's make sure that we're not calling ourselves children of God and not portraying it. So if, if, if you're in one of those two categories, I'm going to count to three, and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, and not just raise your hand. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand boldly. Today is the day when we say, you know what, enough is enough. I'm tired of living in such hatred. I'm tired of living the, the way I've been living. I want that peace that you're talking about, Chris. So on the count of three, just raise your hands. One. And remember, don't let anything hold you back. Don't let the thoughts in your mind telling me that, 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 that nothing's going to change, that nothing can change. I'm here to tell you that it can. Two. Three. Is there anybody out here? Just raise your hand. Say, I'm done with peace. I, I, I want peace. I'm done with strife. I'm done with arguments. I want to trade it in. This is your trading post right here. Trade it in, give it to God, and receive his love, his forgiveness. For those of you raising your hands, go ahead and just come to the altar right now. Even if you didn't raise your hand, come to the altar right now. Don't leave. Don't leave without receiving the peace that God offers, the reconciliation that God is offering you today. Come, you guys, come. Just by you. And nothing else. And nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Jesus. Nothing else. If there's somebody who's saying right now, you're standing there and you're like, man, why am I not going up? There's still time. I know there's somebody out there right now. There's somebody out there right now. We're waiting for you. God is waiting for you. He's saying, come, son, come, daughter, come, son. So we thank you. We thank you. We're going to pray right now, you guys. Yes, yes, yes. Scott. This is huge, you guys. This is huge. Proud of you, brother. Proud of you. I'm going to have Chris pray with everybody, but I want, it's just so important because tomorrow's not guaranteed. And your life has limits to it. If you waste your money, you could go out there and get more money. But if you waste your life and time, 
time you can't get back. And there's going to be a time, a moment, that you've breathed your last breath and you will go into eternity. You know, Chris has not been transformed from being in a bike gang and gangster and criminal to the person he is today because of his discipline. He became a new man because of a relationship with the creator of the universe that made him new. And I just want to just under, what you, want you to understand this, that Jesus makes himself available to you. His love, his forgiveness, and his eternal life, not religion. You might think, if I died right now, I'd go to heaven, and I would say, why? And this is the answer. I, I, was, at a, I was at Mathis Brothers, and a salesperson was trying to sell me some furniture, and I told them, most people think that if they die, they'll go to heaven because they're good people. And you know what he told me? He goes, that's what I believe. And I told him, no one gets into heaven because they're good people. Because the truth is, we've broken, all of us have broken God's laws. And you can't stand before a judge and tell him, hey, I've done a little, lot of good things. Can you excuse all the bad I've done? The reality is we've all, we're all sinners and we all deserve punishment. And we're all guilty, but God loved you so much that he sent his son to pay the price for all the wrong you've done so you can be forgiven. The price must be paid. I want you to get this. Either you accept the forgiveness and the price has been paid or you pay it. But there was something he said, I'm going to end it with this. And I just got a picture of this. And this is happening to every single person that's in this room or it's happened to every single person that's in this room is this. I see a picture of Jesus knocking on your door. And he's saying, will you let me in so we can have a relationship? Will you let me forgive you? Will you allow me to give you a free gift of eternal life? I want to give you a new start. I want to set you free. I want to make you new. I want to give you comfort that if you died, you'd know you have eternal life and you'll live forever and you'd have peace with God forever. But as he's knocking, and maybe you've done this, have you ever had someone knock on your door and you knew who they were and you didn't want them to come into your house and you act like you weren't there? Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Don't do that to God. Because right now, Jesus, he's humbled himself. And he's knocking at your door. He's knocking at your door. And he's saying, come on, let me in and forgive you. Give you eternal life. Let me give you, let me give you freedom and peace. Let's make peace. And this is the reality. Either you're at war with God or you've made peace with God. Being at war with God is saying, no. Not right now. Chris did that. But I pray today is your day. You're not going to receive eternal life without making a decision. Open up your heart's door and let Jesus in. Is there a day that you did that? If there's not a day you did that, if you don't remember, when did I do that? You never did it. When was the day you gave your life to Jesus? I don't know. You never did it. That's why. Because when you did it, you know you did it. So give your life to Jesus today. If you're in this room and you're not sure if you were to die right now, that you'd go to heaven, that you were saved, you have made peace with God. I'm asking you a question. Are you 100% sure? If you're not 100% sure, why would you leave here like that? Tomorrow's not guaranteed. We had one of our sisters in church two weeks ago, Darlene, that passed away. She, just, she was here. She's gone. Don't leave here not knowing you're right with God. The opportunity's here. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. I'm going to give one more opportunity. If you're here and you're not sure you're right with God, you're not sure if you died right now, you'd go to heaven. This is what I want you to do. I want you to leave your seat and I want you to come up real quick. I'm going to give you one more shot because there's somebody here that this is your moment to take a step and say, you know what? I'm not right. I want to get sure. I want to get right with God. And God loves you enough to give you one more opportunity. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there? I'll go up there with you. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. All right. 
All right, there he is right there. Come on. Just one more. Come on. That's right there. Another Chris right now. Come on. Another Chris. All right. Chris, lead him in prayer. Proud of you. Man, man. Praise God. Praise God. So after this prayer, remember, it doesn't end here. This is the beginning of something, okay? There's a task. When you've been reconciled with God, you've been called to the ministry of reconciliation. So go ahead and repeat after me. Father, forgive me for the times that I've warred against you. When I've rejected you. When I've said I want to do it my way. Forgive me, Lord. I, recon I, I want the gift of reconciliation that you offer through your son, Jesus Christ. I pray that your Holy Spirit fill me now. I pray for the task of reconciliation would be given to me. Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. It's the beginning, you guys. This is the beginning. Come on, let's give Jesus a shout of praise of all these souls that were saved today. And just like Pastor Chris said, this is the beginning. Everybody here in the front, our next step is starting at away. Our discipleship class, so make sure to sign up. You guys, this Sunday is Father's Day. We got a great word in store. We're going to have some old cars here. We're going to have a little car show for the men. You don't want to miss it. This Sunday, Father's Day. And then next Wednesday, our anniversary kicks off. Pastor Mark will be with us. So many great speakers. Next Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then that Sunday, three launches in three different countries. We love you guys. If anybody needs prayer, come on down. We'd love to pray with you guys. If anybody needs additional prayer, come on down. we love to pray with you guys. Pastor Chris, great job. Great, great word today. If anybody needs prayer, come on down. This Sunday, Father's Day, don't miss it. We're going to have a car show outside. We're going to have a great time. We love you guys. If God is for you, who could come against you? Have a great week, you guys.